Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making a 1916 civilian dress. Hello and welcome. So we're going to go ahead and start on this gown. We've made this dress before. Um, right now we're doing it in pure correct fabric because the last time was just a mock-up. Uh, I don't usually show my mock-ups but I figured hey, it could be fun. Anyway, so I have this really nice uh, linen, embroidered linen, which is really hard to find and really nice. So, uh, the only problem with it is very see-through. We're going to have to put a lining into this thing, which I did last time kind of anyway. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So, it has this nice little scalp on there. I definitely want to use that like I did with the last one on the sleeves and the bodice. Um, right now we're cutting the skirt and we're going to change how we did the skirt from last time because I didn't like how we did the skirt from last time. So yeah, we're going to cut this. I'm not using the powder piece because I just took measurements and it made it a lot easier. And one thing I do need to do is make sure, did I cut? I did, okay. This is my nice, lovely, long skirt piece. I'm going to figure out how to put a pocket into this because I definitely want a pocket. And that was the wrong side. This is the right side. Hey, it's even prettier than I thought it was. It was already pretty on the wrong side, but here we are. There's the right side of the fabric. And so we're going to cut exactly the edge. I don't have to finish this edge, which as you remember last time, it saved us some time. That is the base of it. I'm going to save this for something. I have no idea what at this point, but that's good fabric, so we're going to keep it. And then we can start sewing. Alright, welcome to the new setup, um, at least as far as the modern machine goes. So yes, this is my ironing board, so I have to sew and iron on the same place. So this should be quite interesting. I have to keep moving things around, but we don't have a lot of space, and this is what we're doing. So I am... Um, going to take this back piece and I need to finish this edge off. This is the back and neckline. So I just cut a little piece. Actually, I found this piece. I'm pretty sure this is from when I ripped it to, or ripped the skirt to make it nice and even. So I'm using this. So I'm going to iron this open and then I get to fold this over, fold that over, so it looks like that. And I did one side already, but I need to do the other side. So for the front, I'm just basting by hand because I didn't want that, I didn't want to see machine show, showing here. So just by hand stitching that little um, lining there so it doesn't gape open. It stays where it needs to be, but you cannot see the stitching on this side. So I gotta do that on the other side. Give this whole thing a good iron. I'm gonna do a run and fell seam, I think, instead of last time we did the um, French seam. But I think the run and fell is, well, it's a superior seam. Let's we'll start there in terms of strength and um, keeping everything contained. It also lays better and I think it's a more authentic stitch, so that's what we're going to do for this particular one. So, um, I'm going to need to, well, I guess I could go ahead and, no, I can't go ahead and that. I'm going to look for white thread first. I'm going to do all my hand stitching first, I think. So, you know, iron this, do that part, then we'll come back and do the run and fell seams. Okay, so I ran the seams, and I'm going to fell them next. I think I've decided I'm going to fell them by hand. And that way you don't see another seam on the other side because it's such a fine fabric. I don't want to do anything that's thick and bulky looking. So I am going to fell this entirely by hand just for looks. And yet I'm just going to whip it shut. Just do my whole 19th century thing that I know. 
So in the long run, it'll be a better situation to do it this way, or a better method, I suppose. So, yep, I'm going to hand stitch all that, and then I'll have to figure out what comes next, because I honestly don't remember. All right, we're sewing sleeves. So she's working a little bit better now. It's still making a very tiny stitch, but it's working a lot better. Well, I say that, and then she gets stuck. It could just be that she was in storage too long. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm going to run it and fill these seams as well. Um, and then, I think we're going to go ahead and attach them. Now we're going to sew in the sleeves. And then we're going to work on the skirt, which should be fairly simple. We are going to have to cut the fabric somewhere to make a pocket, though. Although it probably would be better to get the bodice completely done. So we may actually work on that instead. It's not too difficult. We just got to um, gather it to. Um, fit the waistband. Right, so I'm sewing the waistband now. So basically for this, I only have the directions out. I'm, I'm literally just looking at the blue dress that I made and copying it. So I measured, you know, that dress is uh, waistband. So the waistband doesn't go all the way through. This part isn't gathered. The other part on the other side isn't gathered. This part all is, and it's attached to a twill waistband on the inside. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So this is double stitched, because um, one's on the bottom, one's on the top. And then we stitch the skirt to this top one. Which, yeah, it does look kind of weird to our modern eyes. But it kind of, I don't know, it, it lays really nicely. So I, I like the way the pattern does it. If I didn't say it before, um, we're making uh, Wearing History's Eloise. It's an original 1916 pattern. And I'll have the Etsy link linked below. So this is the skirt. I'm stitching the panels together. Um, I am going to line the skirt because this fabric is so gauzy and it likes to distort. Just like pulling on it will make it longer and it needs a little bit of stability. So this fabric was going to have to be lined. So I am cutting out some cotton white linings that way it kind of matches with the petticoat. Um, so you don't really see anything underneath. Which actually works out better because I will wear this a lot for modern wear. And it's helpful not to have to remember that I need a slip to wear under it if it's already, you know, pre-lined. So I'm going to do that. And then at some point we're going to have to cut a, a pocket. The original does not have a pocket in it, but I need a pocket. So we're going to have to add a pocket to this. But I'm going to fill this uh, seam by hand as well. Okay, so we're about to sew the skirt on, but I want to show you how I pinned it. So this is how the waistband turned out. And then um, skirt that I just, you know, folded down and hand gathered. And I just stitched it. Uh, I know the pattern, if you've watched the last video, did a really weird thing where half the skirt wasn't attached to half the bodice. And you had to hook an eye or I think the direction said to snap all the way to the back, which was just annoying and very hard to do by yourself. So I just flipped it over to the front and I have it going from one end of the front to the other end of the front. And I think it should be fine because it would just fold over and you would look like you have just like a pleat here. So I think it's going to work. We're going to find out. 
But I'm using a large stitch, that way if I have to take this out, it's not the end of the world. Actually, I'm going to make it to where the stitch is in the middle, so it's easier to do. I'm trying to just go right on the gathering. So the skirt is like topically applied and you can kind of see it's um, not like stitched together, right sides together and flipped over. You're supposed to be able to see this from the right side of the dress. It's like a little decoration. After this, I'm going to figure out where the best spot to put the pocket is going to be, and I'll cut out a pocket and we'll put that in. Alright, so I cut a pocket. <clears throat> I ended up cutting one from in uh, another, I think it's a 1911 skirt actually. So it's a little bit earlier, but it's still period pattern for a pocket. And I'm just now sewing it. So I cut two pocket pieces. I wanted it to show the pink from the front so it didn't look weird and look out of place. You didn't like notice the um, pocket right off the bat. But I also wanted it to be strong so I did the two layer pocket just like I did the two layer skirt with the cotton, uh, white cotton underneath of the uh, pink. And I got my own weird way of sewing in pockets, which is, you know, one of many ways to sew in pockets. It's not always the most efficient way, but it works for me. And here it is. So, yeah, I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful dress. Looks just like the blue one did, except for it's pink and slightly more appropriate fabric. So the blue one's very modern, especially with that lace at the bottom. This is a more historic design. Um, it's very light and flowy, which is typical of the, you know, 19 teens dresses. And yeah, there's a little design at the bottom. I am glad we decided not to make this like the double layer. I like the double layer. Now this one is what the original showed so the original pattern showed so this is the more authentic way to do it anyway but it also with how far up this design goes i wouldn't and how short i am you wouldn't have been able to get the full uh, embroidery of both i am also very pleased with how it turned out to make it open in the front i'm doing the same with the blue dress so the blue dress is going to uh, not do the weird you know hook and eye thing all the way to the back it's going to be more like this. This is way easier to put on. I can do it myself, which is great because whenever I wear the blue one, that blue one's one of my favorite dresses, by the way. When I wear the blue one, I have to have my husband dress me every day, or every time anyway. So I wear it fairly often. I've worn it, I don't know, at least once every other week, if not once a week, I wear that dress. So I'm happy to have a second one. And yeah, it's so nice and light. So. I actually got this done because it is Wednesday, I think, and my cousin's getting married on Saturday, and I thought, okay, I could really use a nice summer dress. She said, like, nice, she said Easter clothing, like Easter church clothes. I was like, oh, I wear that blue one to church, and it's fairly appropriate, so um, let's just make a lighter version in a nice summer pink. And that blue one's a little heavy, especially with the two layers. So I was like, I want something nice and light, because this is June, and... Um, it's June that I'm filming this and getting this done, and it is Texas, and it's an after wedding, so let's just try to do something very nice and light and pretty, and so I think this fits the bill. 
linen is always very cool, and this is, I believe, a cotton linen blend. And it's this nice gauzy like fabric. So it's very light, very pretty, and it's a good color. So I'm overall very pleased with it. I can get dressed by myself in this one now. So I'm going to change the other one. It has the pockets, which is awesome. I wish I kind of put it over a little bit further, but it's okay. It, it works where it is. It's a nice, long, deep pocket. I'm trying to see where it, where it ends here. So that's my one complaint about that blue one is I didn't have anywhere to put my stuff. So now I have fixed that. And that's also going to happen with the blue ones. The blue one's getting the skirt changed out and it's um, in a pocket fitted. So other than that, that dress is perfect and I love it. And so I'm looking forward to many, many wears of this one as well. So let me show you the bottom. I think it's a new border as well. So you can see it's a really good length. It's nice and long. I, I like skirts this length. So it's just about ankle length on me. But it doesn't feel heavy or burdensome. It's really nice and light and flowy. Yeah, that is our 19 teens dress. So I have the 19 teens canteen dress and I have a civilian dress. That'll work. Um, next time, I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm tossing what I want to do. So last year with the canteen service dress, everyone thought I was a nurse. So part of me thinks maybe I should just go ahead and make a nurse's outfit and just be a nurse since that's apparently what everyone thinks I'm supposed to be doing anyway. I don't know anything about 19, I don't know anything about nursing period, but I definitely don't know anything about World War I nursing, but I can learn a little bit and don't like I require too much medical knowledge to do that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm considering that. The other thing is most of the, what my husband and I do when we're at uh, these events in Keys, Paysbury is we drive the Model T cars. And that was a big thing in World War One. another Red Cross volunteer um, was the motor car, the motor services. And they would um, usually furnish their own car and their own gas, but they would help the Army by moving supplies, moving people to from place to place. So it was like a volunteer situation. And I actually do have a pattern for the motor car service, motor service, I forget exactly, there's a word for it, and I forget what it is exactly, but the motor service um, volunteer, like, uniform, basically, like a driving suit, and so I consider doing that as well, since that's basically what we do, the only thing is, I would be the one having to drive a car, and I don't know how to drive Model T's or Model A's yet, um, Model A's wouldn't be around in the 401, so happy Model T, but, um, yeah, I am... We own a Model A. I don't drive flossy. I ride a flossy. I like flossy. Um, I don't know how to drive it. So, um, technically, if we were doing the motor car stuff, it would be me driving and having my husband riding with me as I would be taking him somewhere to serve wherever he needs to be serving in the Army or whatever. So, um, I don't know if that's the most practical thing for me to do. It's kind of what I want to do. And it makes sense for what we are doing. That's that I would be doing that, um, the motor car service. But it would be nice to learn how to drive. So I don't know if I'm going to be quiet at that point. But yeah, I have one civilian dress. So we'll be making a couple more 1918s World War One um, uniform type dresses. So we already have the canteen service worker. The plan eventually is to do a nurse one and the motor car stuff, and maybe another civilian outfit, just because I don't know what the future holds and I really really like this dress pattern and I think it's a really excellent dress and I will probably be making a lot more of those of these um, whether they're historical or not and if they're not historical I wouldn't be filming them but um, but yeah thank you so much for joining me today if you enjoyed it like and subscribe and make sure you click that little bell notification and make sure you're notified anytime I upload a new video and as always have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video